Charlie kicked you out? He was talking during the movie? Yeah? Oh, you thought it was boring anyway? Hey guys, it's Danielle, and I am going to do another adoption talk. So if you guys are new here, November is Adoption Awareness Month, and I'm just spending this month taking some time to chat about adoption topics and things like that. So if you're interested in adoption or our story or perspective, then stick around for the conversation. For you guys that have already been joining me, welcome back. Grab your drinks and let's talk adoption. So today I want to chat about family and friends and outside perspectives and thoughts and things like that. So just talk about some of the things that we hear, some of the things that um, people said to us prior to adoption and things like that. So the number one thing we got when we first talked about adopting, especially since we were talking about adopting an older child was, oh my gosh, but you don't know what you're going to get. That was like the number one thing. You don't know what you're going to get. You don't know what type of child is going to be. You don't know what issues they're going to have. You don't know, like you just don't know what you're going to get. And that is so very true. My counter to that was you don't know what you're going to get with a biological child. And I think for me, I was able to feel that way because I already had an older child and he by far was my lesson child. I learned so much from him. He challenged me a lot and I grew a lot as a parent and a person having him as a child and I birthed him. So I knew, you know, like he was in my wound. I knew what he was exposed to. I knew um, his background and yet and still there came several different challenges. So for me that said that hey if your birth child can challenge you to that degree then you know what's the difference between an adoptive child. So that was always my response to that. You don't know what you're going to get with a biological child either. We don't know how our children are going to turn out when they are 11, 12, 20, 16, you know, any of those ages. We can only hope and pray that we're doing the right things as parents and that they will go in the right direction. So expect to hear that. That was kind of a, a, a huge thing. And I guess I should be kind of saying the... The correct terms or questions to ask when you're speaking to someone about adoption. So you know, I think when people are asking the question about you or saying you don't know what you're gonna get, that is that fear, you know, they're worried. And I think the proper way to ask that question would be, are you worried about the challenges that may come with bringing a child into your family whose history you don't know much about? That would be the proper way to ask that question. Once we did adopt, we get, oh, you know, you guys are saints or those children are so lucky, those type of comments. And we tend to cringe when we hear that because A, I am far from a saint. Adopting is by far one of the most challenging things to do and there are days where it is just difficult and it is hard and I am far from a saint in those moments in the term of a saint. We don't consider our kids to be lucky as though we just kind of like rescue them from this, you know, poverty situation and they're so lucky to be in our home. You know, we, they could be with parents or in a family that is better than ours so who's to say they are lucky to be with us so that's kind of my feelings toward that and that and we get that a lot and I know that people that are saying it are well-meaning they just don't quite understand what that means and what that looks like when you say oh they're so lucky um, as far as 
wanted to express to somebody they are doing something that you feel is a good thing i think the proper way would be you guys are really brave and really strong and it must be a huge um commitment for you guys to explore to adventure into that type of um journey you know you want to build somebody up but not make them feel bad for <laughs> not being a saint in other words so or make them feel guilty um the other thing would be wow you know how wonderful it is for those for the kids to have a forever home and to have a family and to know what it is to have unconditional love versus oh they're so lucky kind of statement the other thing we get is oh well where'd you get them from <laughs> like you know it's a purse or shoes you know where, where'd you get them from i mean like we didn't just purchase them or get them from somewhere or anything like that i think the better way would be would be um where are they from where were they born were they born here were they born somewhere else that kind of question when you're curious as to where their adoption took place that is a question that we tend to get a lot and we've had people say you know oh okay i can tell you know that they're adopted or um oh yeah okay i can see it now when when we had our first adopted child we would have people say oh yeah he's a totally different complexion from the rest of your kids it is like really really so those kind of things so for us for a long time we didn't necessarily share that our first child was adopted and that was difficult because his birthday is three days before our daughter's birthday so when people would say well when's their birthday and we would have to say one birthday is you know this day and the other is three days later we got that question that look of like what how'd that happen or you know what i don't know and sometimes we would answer it and a lot of times we wouldn't you know my husband started saying it's a long story some people when we felt they were being really kind of rude and intrusive about it we would say oh you know he had an affair and so we took that baby and that would shut people up really quick <laughs> so stuff like that because people can be super super intrusive and just ask really personal questions and sometimes it would be when our kids were sitting there and it's like you you can't you don't get the fact that we're saying don't you know like don't go there with this so for a long time we just wouldn't even talk about the fact that he was adopted and wouldn't share that information you know we just said they were unofficial twins and just left it at that he always knew but again just sharing it with the world and that's because we don't want we didn't want people to distinguish him as different because people will do that people will automatically distinguish that child as different so we've had in the past where people didn't know they had no idea that we had an adoptive child and then the moment they find out it is almost like their attitude changed and things were different and they started looking at things different and viewing it differently so that that's a struggle for us so moving that with our with our second adoption because they were older of course they knew they were adopted and of course there was no way around that with outside people so we did not even share that we were adopting a second time. Like we just kept that information strictly between our family because we didn't want to have the, I was already on the fence and struggling and we didn't want to have outside voices um, tainting is the word I'm looking for, tainting our thoughts about if we wanted to do it. So we didn't really share with anybody and when they came home of course it's like well obviously i didn't just magically have another child you know 11 years ago and nobody knew so i had to share that information and i had to talk about it and what we got a lot was wow three well where did they come that you know where'd you get them from do they have the same parents 
are they relatives of yours um how is it with the older child you know we changed all of their names and it's so funny because people were like there is no way she is going to change her name like you cannot just change an 11 year old's name and she is going to fight you guys and she's going to hate you guys and you can't do that and that we just didn't have that issue but if we would have listened to those voices then that could have been a problem for us so people just have these preconceived notions about adoption and I think adoption is already hard and already difficult and when you don't have people that understand or they have their own preconceived notions they can make it more difficult a prime example of that is when we are in our struggles with adoption when it is hard and it is in a dark place and we are looking for a support system and we share with um, friends or family about the heart we get well you chose it you 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 chose to do this like you decided to adopt them you did it it is like just because this is my favorite quote you guys just because I chose something does not mean it is not hard like you just because you choose something doesn't mean it isn't going to be hard it, it doesn't mean you're not going to have moments of despair and weakness and moments of questioning your um choices so a lot of people think that like because we you know it's almost like with pregnancy you can say well i didn't choose it it was an accidental pregnancy and people are okay with that but with adoption because you mentally make the decision and choose to adopt you you're not allowed to complain about it you're not allowed to have hardness you're not allowed to be sad you're not allowed to feel these ways because you chose it and that's just not fair and it's not true The other thing that you tend to get is you guys are, you know, you and your spouse or you and your significant other or whoever you are adopting with, that you guys are like miracle workers and um, I'm trying to think of how they say it, um, you know, oh, you're so obedient to God. Like they automatically place a religion on you as though you and I, I know it's because the Bible talks about orphans and that's another thing that you get a lot of people will refer to your adoptive child as an orphan as though they don't know what the definition of an orphan is my children are not orphans their parents and bio mother and father are alive and well from some standpoint they're not orphans um so yeah but because the bible talks about orphans they automatically assume that you are in this bracket of religion and so you know you're you're doing the the god's work you're doing you know you're living out your calling and doing and i'm used doing this a lot <laughs> but you're doing god's work and you know and they'll say that about the kid or to the kids, you know, like, well, I'm God placed this on my heart or God did this. And it's like, well, OK, so you only adopted this child because God told you to, not because you wanted to. For me, adoption was not a religious thing. It was not a God thing. Um, and I, it could have been that God placed it in my heart, but I don't associate it that way. I don't feel that it was necessarily that. I've, I've never felt like, you know, that I'm doing God's work. So you will get that a lot. People will just automatically place you into a certain religious category, which it's not good because if you are not religious or if you are of a different religious category it's not fair to assume that everyone who has adopted is in this particular religious category and so you definitely um <clears throat> get that a lot
so kind of along the lines of your kids being orphans we get a lot of people that try to talk bad about our children's birth mothers or their birth parents or their birth family and discredit them and um you'll hear people say you know oh they they keep having babies and giving them up for adoption and they just need to get their tubes tied or they just need to do this or do that and stop having babies and you know giving them to other people to raise and that just eats me alive because a lot of these people are the same people that are pro-life and it's like you can't be pro-life and then like anti-adoption or pro tubes tied or pro birth control in in these things like there there's a lot of muck in there for us you know we commend our birth mothers i have biological children and again i was a teenage mother and adoption was one of the things that we considered and i cannot imagine the sacrifice for our first child she made a conscious decision to terminate her rights i cannot imagine having a child and trying to parent this child and then realizing i mean first of all you have to be you have to have wisdom to even realize that i cannot parent this child like i can't parent them and to turn them over to somebody else who you don't know a complete stranger and hope that they find a family for your child and then hope that that family is going to love your child and raise your child and parent your child the way that you would have or could have if you were in a place to do that like that sacrifice that is a love sacrifice that is a huge love sacrifice to consciously and wisely make the decision and realize that you cannot parent this child and to just willingly give your child to somebody else in hopes that they have better opportunities so to talk negatively about our children's birth mothers it's just it's ludicrous to me and then to say well they need to get their tubes tied well they may at some point in their life become stable and have it together and then decide you know okay i can now have a child and parent this child that may happen so to talk bad about somebody for making a wise decision i just i, I don't get that so we get that a lot and people don't understand that we don't agree that way agree with that or we don't feel that way about our kids um, birth parents we don't we have closed adoption so they're not open but we would welcome an open adoption we would like we would allow our kids to see their birth family especially if we felt like it was a healthy situation we would never put them in an unhealthy situation mm -hmm. But if it was a healthy situation, we would absolutely want them to have a connection to their um, biological family. So we do get that a lot, that whole stigma of we're the saviors and the birth family are the villains or whatever the terminology would be for that. And I just, that's not the case. So yeah. So that is kind of how the outside world perceives, you know, perceives you or sees your family or those are the things that you'll hear or the questions you'll get or the um, preconceived notions and stereotypes and things like that. So I think I covered them all. If I miss something or if there's a question you guys have around this topic of, you know, outside world and people and family and friends and how the world perceives or questions people say and 
you know all those things then leave them below leave that question below and I will try to cover them at another time so but until then that's all I got guys so thanks for watching if you stuck around for this entire thing if you guys have not subscribed yet and joined the non-traditional family definitely hit that button below and check out my other videos and join me for another adoption talk if you've already subscribed you are the MVP thank you so much love you guys and I will see you next time